So I was driving around the other day and uh, happened to spot this uh, little little tiny fridge by the uh, by the side of the road. Um, thought I might as well stop and pick it up. But, uh, the door wasn't attached; it was off to the side. But I mean, it's so filthy. I didn't actually want to use it as a fridge anyway, so I didn't even bother to get the door. I just uh, wanted to. Uh, poke around and kind of uh, see how it worked. So um, it's uh, <clears throat> an older type of fridge with uh, the um, uh, with the evaporator uh, with the. Uh, with the evaporating, uh, with the evaporator coil inside a little ice box, um, with the uh, with the little ice box, um, and uh, this very crude <laughs> thermostat wire running here. Um, it's a uh, let me get the flash on. It's a uh, GE, General Electric, um, model number SC4SGC, uh, manufactured August of uh, 1986. It's uh, <clears throat> R12, it's an R12 unit. Um, 1.1 amps, 3.9 ounce charge, um, 260 psi high side, 85 psi low side, made in Korea. It's a small, it's a little fridge. Um, <clears throat> I plugged it in, uh, gave it a test run. It didn't. Uh, um, it didn't really do anything. It, it didn't. This uh, didn't heat up. The fridge didn't cool down. Um, so I assumed it had uh, either already been recovered, or it had, uh, which I doubt. I mean, around here, somebody throws the fridge out on their on their uh, at the curb. I doubt it. I doubt they've recovered it. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, it probably had a leak in it. And uh, I uh, cut open the coil, and sure enough, there was there was virtually no pressure in it. There was a, a little puff, but that was it. So no, no real uh, freon left in this. No uh, coolant left in it, for the most part. Um, still has uh, good compression, though. Let me uh, go ahead and plug this in. Tiny little compressor. It's maybe like eight inches in diameter there. Dinky little thing. But uh, yeah, so decent compression on this. So I'm uh, curious to see what I can end up doing with this. It might be fun to just play around with. Um, or cut open, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. We'll see what happens. Cool, thanks. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this puppy out, have a look at it, and see what's going on. I, don't, uh, I can't find my regular pliers. I'm uh, very bad at putting my uh, tools away. So I'm going to pull these pins out with uh, these heavy-duty plumbing pliers.
pin's gonna be tough to get to. But we'll see what happens. As you can tell, I'm uh, definitely not being gentle <laughs> with these pins. This isn't uh, this isn't a restoration or a repair job of any sort. This is uh, strictly a salvage job to get this uh, compressor out of here. So, yeah. See if I can get this uh, this housing out of the way, this uh, electrical connection housing out of the way, so I can get uh, a pair of pliers back there and pull that fourth pin out. Grab a screwdriver over here. this pin or this uh, clip push this clip in and pry it out with the screwdriver This should uh, just lift up off. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of clearance here. So uh, let's take a look at it. I'll go ahead and uh, cut these refrigeration lines. Compressor. All right, we've got. Uh, let me kill that flash. So maybe you can see that. We've got a uh, Matsushita Electric um, model FN25N40K.
It's a 115 volt, 60 hertz, one horse or one pH R12. It's a uh, locked rotor, 4.8 amp, thermally protected. So uh, yeah, decent little uh, mini compressor here. Pretty cool, pretty cool little thing. So uh finally got this compressor open. Um, I had to uh, borrow a small uh, handheld <laughs> reciprocating saw uh, because um, I don't have a grinder. And uh, the closest thing I had was uh, my Dremel with its uh, little metal cutting blade and uh, trying to use that the uh, compressor just kind of laughed at me so <laughs> um, but yeah finally uh, got this open and uh, it's an interesting design I haven't actually seen this before uh, let's see if I can do this with, with one hand It's, uh, it doesn't have a typical cam type drive. Uh, if I go ahead and spin this by hand, you can see the, that, uh, pin in there oscillates back and forth and, uh, pushes the piston in and out. Um, yeah, it's a decent little design. Most of the uh, reciprocating compressors that I've seen have the piston uh, connected directly to the camshaft with a little connecting arm. Um, this, however, has the camshaft connected to uh, um, this little oscillating rod that's uh, housed within um, this little uh, tube that's perpendicular to the piston and uh, that um, oscillates the piston back and forth. So it's uh, pretty interesting. Um, it may or may not be an uncommon design. I, I haven't really taken too many of these apart but um, it's nothing I've ever seen before. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Um, you can see the uh, counterweights um, on the uh, uh, on the motor itself. So, yeah, pretty interesting design as far as uh, from what I've seen. So, yeah, we'll have to uh, definitely figure out something fun for this. Um, Take it apart and see, uh, see what makes it tick. Maybe even uh, burn out that motor. We'll see what happens.